Hi, students and families. Tonight we're going to relate tenths, hundredths, and decimals. As always, let's start by reflecting on our unit learning goal. Remember, it's how can I demonstrate what I know about fractions and decimals by reasoning about their value. Well, with today's lesson, we have a goal that's going to help us get a little bit closer to that unit learning goal. And today's lesson goal is, how can I record tenths and hundredths as fractions and decimals? Okay, today's lesson is a real hands-on opportunity. It's going to be helpful if you have a slice of bread from your kitchen and also some type of cutting board and like a knife that you could cut your bread with. If you don't have it, you can still follow along with the video, but it's a lot more fun if you do. So if you have it, go get it right now and then pause the video and come back. All right, here we go. We're going to start with one whole, and that is your slice of bread. If you have one whole, you have one over one, that's your fraction, and written as a decimal, it is 1.0. That means one whole, and when you see that decimal, you say and, and the zero means nothing more. Okay, now the fun begins. I want you to cut your bread slice into 10 pieces like you see in the picture. Now you will have 10 tenths. Okay, it gets a little trickier here. Take one of your tenths and cut it into 10 pieces. Now you have 10 hundredths. And the way you write that is just like this. And you would write it as a fraction. You have 10 hundredths. And the way that we know that that would be hundredths is if you took each of those 10 and you cut them up into 10 pieces, which I'm not asking you to do, just one you would have a total of a hundred of those little pieces. And if you put them all back together, remember you'd have that whole piece of bread again. Okay, set out two of those long strips and five of the smaller ones that you've just cut. How much do you have? Well, do we have a hole? Nope, not anymore, we've cut it up, so we have zero holes. Remember when we see the decimal, we say the word and. So we have zero and, I see one, two of those, two tenths and one, two, three, four, five, five hundredths. So I have 25 hundredths. You say the number 25 and you call it hundredths because that's where the last digit is. And we could write that as a fraction, 25 hundredths. So far, so good. Now, as we go along with this lesson tonight, you can use your bread pieces to model the tenths and the hundredths. You can also use place value charts and number lines to record your tenths and hundredths as fractions and decimals. And you can see here is a chart that you might want to refer to. If I were writing a number like this one right here, I would say five and 678 thousandths. We're not going to be going to thousandths tonight. We're only going to be talking about tenths and hundredths. Okay, let's put it with a word problem. Ty is reading a book about metamorphic rocks. He has read seven tenths of the book. What decimal describes the part of the book Ty has read? So we know the fraction. The fraction is 7 tenths. So one way that we could model this is to use a model, and another way is to use a place value chart. So, or you can use your bread. You could lay out seven of those long strips. Let's go ahead and start with this way first. We've got the fraction 7 tenths, and we're going to shade in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them. And I would write that as 7 tenths. And I say that 7 tenths. If I want to do it as a decimal, I would know that I have zero ones. And if you're looking at your bread, you can see you don't have that. I have 7 tenths. And I have 
no hundredths. So I don't have to put a zero, I can just leave it blank. So I write this as 0 0.7 and I would say it or read it as one of two ways. I could either say 0 and 7 tenths or I could just say 7 tenths. And here's one more way that you could record this 7 tenths of a book that Ty has read. You could use a number line. So you can see on the top of this number line you have your decimals recorded all along here. I'm sorry, your fractions recorded all along here. And down at the bottom you have your decimals. So we still have some missing information down here that we need to fill in. Zero tenths is the same thing as zero and no tenths. One tenth is zero and one in the tenths place. And here's two tenths, so I need to fill in zero and three in the tenths place, zero and four in the tenths place, and I'm going to keep going, and here we go. And if I'm looking for seven tenths, I'm going to find that fraction, and there it is as a decimal, so zero point seven names the same amount as seven tenths the fraction. So Ty read 0 0.7 or seven tenths of the book. Okay, here's another one for us to do together. In the 2008 Summer Olympic Games, the winning time in the men's 100 meter butterfly race was only one one hundredth second faster than the second place time. Wow, that's a close race. What decimal represents this fraction of a second? You can write hundredths as fractions or decimals. So we're going to start off with this fraction part. And you can see that we have this tiny little model here. And I need to shade in one one hundredth of the model. Well, if each of those squares is a, represents one of the hundredths, then I'm going to color it just, oops, I don't even know if I can mark it on here, one of those little boxes. And I would call that one one hundredth. And you read it as one hundredth. Now I could also record it as a decimal. And this is my decimal chart, which I find really handy. Remember that these are your ones, this is your decimal point or your and spot. And then you start off with tenths, then hundredths, and so on. You'll notice that there's no such thing as once. The first column to the right of the decimal point is the tenths, and it's really important that you remember that. Okay, let's get back to the problem. We're going to write down one hundredth. So I have zero holes, there's my decimal, zero tenths, but I have one hundredth. So I would write that as zero and one hundredth. And you can see the one is in the hundredth place. So I'll read that as one hundredth. Now, like before, you can also do this on a number line. And you can see that this number line, again, is not complete. So let's go ahead and fill that in. The top row is your fractions. And yes, I got it right that time. <laughs> Bottom row is your decimals. So we've got 0, 0.00. Then you've got 0 and 10 hundredths, 0 and 20 hundredths. So I'm going to keep filling it in with 0 and 30 hundredths, 40 hundredths, and so on. Go ahead and fill these in with me. All the way up to one whole, which would be 100 hundredths. Now I only want to look at one hundredth, so you can see that that is going to be between here and here. And you can see each of these tiny little lines, there's zero hundredths to ten hundredths, so each of these tiny little lines represents one. So I'm going to go just to that first line where you can see it's marked in blue, and this would be represented by the decimal of 0 0.01. So this names the same amount as one hundredth. Go ahead and record this information in your notes. Okay, here's another example I want you to write down. Alicia won her 400 meter freestyle race by 4 and 2500 seconds. How can you write this mixed number 
as a decimal? Well, I can see her whole number. We have four ones, so I'm going to put a four in the ones. And then she has 25 hundredths. So she has 25 is two tens and five hundredths. So two tenths and five hundredths. And we would write that as four and twenty-five hundredths and write it in words the same way. Four and twenty-five hundredths. There you go. Another way you could do this is with the number line. We're going to go ahead and name number the lump, excuse me, label the number line with equivalent mixed numbers and decimals. And then we're going to locate the point four and twenty-five hundredths. I'm going to go ahead and have you write this down and I'm going to pause the video and then we will come back and check and see if we have the same thing. Okay, as you can see, I've gone ahead and filled in the missing numbers on my number line for the decimal part. And I'm looking for four and twenty-five hundredths on the number line. And I know that that is halfway between 4.20 and 4.30. So we write that as four and twenty-five hundredths. And this names the same amount as this fraction. So these two say the same thing. Okay, think this one over. Which decimal is greater? Eight tenths? or eight hundredths. What do you think? Well, if you still have your bread, you could look back and know that eight tenths look like this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you had eight hundredths, you would have taken one of these and you would have broke it down into, remember the little pieces? And you would have had four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and you would have taken eight of those. So it's pretty easy to see right now that eight tenths is more than eight hundredths. Kind of seems tricky because of the, the word hundred and ten being in there. But remember these are tenths and hundredths. Another way to prove that is with that decimal. So remember the decimal chart? Those are your ones. Here's where your decimal point goes. And then remember you have tenths is that first place. And then hundredths. Wow, it's kind of hard to write small along here. So if you have eight tenths, that would be here. And if you had eight hundredths, you would have no tenths. And that would be way out here. So eight tenths, definitely more than eight hundredths. Okay, I have a little quick check within this lesson. Remember our lesson goal? Let's see if you've mastered it yet. Can you record tenths and hundredths as fractions and decimals now? Well, let's see. I want you to go ahead and write this down. I want you to write 38 hundredths as a decimal, and then I want you to write 0 0.7 as a fraction, and 0. Point, excuse me, 0 0.05 as a fraction. Pause the video. Come back and we'll check and see how you did with your lesson goal. Good luck! Okay, how'd you do? I hope that you wrote this as your decimal, this seven in your tenths place, so I have seven tenths, and five hundredths because this is in my hundredths place. Now here's a little bonus question. Is there another way that I could write seven tenths? Could I write that as hundredths? Sure I could, because if I have seven in my tenths place, that would mean I have nothing in my hundredths, but could I still write 70 hundredths as my fraction? Yep, and that would work as well. Good job. All right, you finished this lesson. Now you can go ahead and eat that bread if you haven't already. Go ahead and complete the lesson check that's part of this video that's after this video, I'm sorry, and be sure to include the work for those problems on your notes and bring them with you to class tomorrow. We will start class by reviewing and discussing those problems together. Have a great evening.